<laughs> it's tea time with Lauren. Um, I have paint in my hair. If you follow me on, I mean, this is like, seriously, what? Ugh. I'm just a mess. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I'm remodeling a lot of stuff in the house. And right now I'm on the bathroom, the downstairs bathroom. And picking out a paint color has been nothing short of horrific. I have so many paint samples. It's like, it makes no sense. My mom's like, just, she's like, at this point, you just have to pick something. And she's one to talk because she's always forever trying to pick out a paint color. Now she sees how I feel when I have to hear about all of her paint samples. But anyhow, somehow I got paint in my hair this morning. Fun. <laughs> Okay, it's time for another tea time with Lauren. We missed last week's because my poor little doggies uh, got attacked and it's been a terrible week, terrible sleepless nights. My dog was in, I have, I have one and a half dogs, I'll say. So Yoji, the Papillon, that's my dog. And then Campbell, who's a Sheba, she is my friend's dog. And my friend goes to work all day. I work from home. So he brings over Campbell in the morning and then he picks up Campbell when he gets home from work at night. So Campbell's like essentially my dog because I have her five times a week and her and Yoji have been best friends since they were little puppies. So both of them got attacked last week and it was just awful. It was just awful. So I could not go live last week, but today is like the first day where I'm feeling remotely like a human again. Like I actually like put on some clothes and some makeup. I have another, a fresh zit. I don't know like what, like what is going on with my face? I guess it's all the stress. So for this week's Tea Time with Lauren, I'm answering the questions from last week. Last week's topic was supposed to be style for the workplace. So that is what we are talking about today. I chose the top five questions that were submitted. We have some good ones, and I'm actually very excited about this particular topic because I'm working on something new, which will come out this summer, and it has a lot to do with styling to advance your life. You know, career is a big part of a lot of our lives. And just the way that we as women are forced to approach style in the workplace is just so different than how a man would approach style in the workplace. Like they just put on your button up shirt, put on your polo, put on a suit, put on like a little plaid shirt and some jeans, like their shit is simple. We have so many different layers, so many different ways that we could be perceived and it ends up just being like a very stressful situation. So I'm excited to, to jump into this and we've got some good questions and look forward to more content that's gonna get way deeper in how we as women approach our work wardrobes. We're about to change the game here, ladies. You don't even know, you don't even know LM's new big mission when it comes to style for the workplace. So buckle up. All right, into the questions. First questions, first question, times have changed. What are workplace basics for millennials? Okay, you're right. Times have changed and the wardrobes that we are wearing the business, the professional wardrobes, they're just so different. Even industries that are much more serious have really loosened up what their wardrobes are. You know, there's the next question is that how do you dress for a business casual work environment? Most environments are the sort of business casual, leaning more heavily on casual, which leads to a lot of confusion because We've grown up being like, it's work, work is serious. And there's studies that show that when you dress in a way that makes you feel powerful and successful, that your performance is going to follow. You know, I know that when I get dressed in the morning for work, whether it's this, like this is my work outfit, 
I feel professional and put together for my particular industry and for what I do for a living. But if I just had on sweats, which I did earlier this week while taking care of uh, injured dogs, my performance suffered big time, big time. Like I barely got shit done. Today is like, we're fucking moving today. It was whack as hell the rest of the week. So times have changed where we are entering a wardrobe for work that is much, much more casual. So as far as the basics go, it's really gonna vary industry to industry, and it's really gonna vary based on what your goals are in the workplace. You know, do you want to blend in and be one of many? Do you want to stand out? Do you want to get promoted? Do you want to, you want to run the company? You want to take your boss's job? Like, what is it that you want to do? How are you wanting to be perceived in the workplace? So that's really going to dictate what your basics are. And I have a feeling that if you follow me, you're a go for more type of gal who wants to step shit up. So I would encourage you to look at those around you. I mean, you can't be the asshole in a startup where everyone's wearing jeans and a hoodie and you're wearing a freaking suit. You look stupid and out of touch. It doesn't make sense. But how can you wear the best version of a casual outfit? How can you work in pieces that give you that sense of power, whatever form of power you're trying to tap into? Feminine power, um, unfortunately, like, being one of the boys power because sometimes that's just how this shit works. You know, I was talking to a client right before this, we were having a little Skype call checking in and she works in a very professional environment. And she's like, you know, it's just the reality, like having a pretty face and like fitting in with the guys. It's just an unfortunate reality of getting ahead sometimes. So like, how can you do that to the best of your ability? So I would say that if your environment, everyone's wearing jeans and a t-shirt, can you wear the best damn jeans and t-shirt? Can your jeans fit perfectly, not have a bunch of like rips and fades in them? Can you wear a banging shoe? Can you wear a really classic, beautifully made t-shirt and throw a little blazer or a little cardigan or some like little topper over it? So you are still casual, but the best version of that casual. So, you know, it's kind of hard to answer that question directly for a millennial because there's so many different industries, but, you know, you things need to fit. I see a comment on, um, on Instagram that's just scrolling by. I feel more confident when I'm professional and dress for my body type. Her thing's getting cut off. I can't read it perfectly. Um, but when shit fits, and when it's the best piece that you could buy in the given category, that's gonna help you excel in the workplace, in my opinion. You know, there's a difference between picking up a ratty, dirty pair of jeans that are sagging in the butt and a pair of jeans that fit perfectly, that you had tailored so the length is right, that's gonna make you look leaps and bounds more successful than the person who just put on the, the schlubby things, okay? Uh, next question, how do you dress? For a casual work environment, it's kind of the same, it's kind of along the same answer as the uh, basics for millennials. You do casual the best way that you know how. I can feel completely casual in a little dress as I can in a pair of jeans, but it's like the best version of that casual piece. Uh, shoes that aren't falling apart, clothes that don't have stains on them, things that fit you right. That's how you do casual. That's how you step up casual. I mean, I love observing, you know, women who are dressed impeccably well. You know, it's a new way of looking at clothing. If you're scrolling through Instagram, uh, looking on Pinterest, walking down the street and seeing someone just looking phenomenal, instead of going over into jealousy of like, who she thinks she is, looking all nice, really looking and analyzing why does she look so nice she's just wearing a <coughs> a button-up shirt and jeans and loafers why does she look so nice wow maybe it's because the shirt isn't wrinkled 
Maybe it's because the jeans fit perfectly. Maybe it's because her shoes are not scuffed up. She's still casual. She's still comfortable, but she just looks effortless and really put together. So making those observations, making better choices when you're shopping, and taking those extra steps that no one wants to take of going to the tailor, of busting out the steamer in the morning, getting out the iron, you know. We don't want to do that. But if you want to look like you're put together, you have to. Um, I, I finally got a little bit of a break yesterday. My friend's mom came into town to help take care of the dogs because you can't let the dogs out of your sight. Like today, Yoji's feeling a little bit better. So he thinks he can run and jump and go up the stairs. He can't. He has broken ribs. So like chasing down these dogs. So she watched them and I got a little break and I got my hair done. Hey. And I just noticed like what a difference in the way that I felt, in the way that I was perceived when that little extra step was taken to actually do my hair. <laughs> Where when I walked in there, I did not do my hair. I just stuck a hat on and called it a day. And I'm like, you know what? It wouldn't have taken me that long to like flat iron the flyaways and like put a little product in. What a difference. It's the same thing for a casual work environment. Finding the better version of a hoodie to wear, shining the shoe, ironing some clothes. Okay. Uh, question three, do comfy, relaxed, flowy office clothes read as unprofessional or inappropriate? Again, it all really depends. And this is why when you work with me, whether it's through my book or one of my programs, I'm really big on perception. I'm really big on perception and having the awareness of your own goals and the environment around you. So if everyone else at work who's killing it, not the people that are losers and who are on the, you know, the brink of getting fired, but the people that are really killing it, how are they carrying themselves? Um, and how are you feeling? Like you could feel completely polished, put together, professional in a flowy little tunic and a great pair of like skinny jeans and boots or little sandals or something. But if you are wearing that same flowy stuff with the intention of hiding yourself because you feel self-conscious about your body, then of course you're not going to feel appropriate and professional because you're going to be in the mindset of hiding and hoping that no one sees you and finds out that you ate like a pint of ice cream the night before. So it really goes with the intention and it goes with the environment. If everyone else is wearing like really crisp um, items, then yeah, you're by default because you don't feel that you belong, you're not going to feel appropriate. One of the questions I was asking, I had a little um, round table lunch with some of my personal style university members in Beverly Hills last weekend. I was saying in a perfect world in the workplace, what would you wear? And they were like, you know, I'd love to just dress in like my own feminine power and wear like a flowy floral dress with red lipstick and not be looked at sideways or not feel like I don't fit in. They're like, it's really frustrating to have to fit into this mold of a more structured male dominated type of look. And I was like, dude, I totally hear you. Like so many of the professional items that we have to wear are based off of what a man would wear a tailored blazer, a button-up shirt, it sucks. And I think that we can all work to slowly change that. But with big change like that, it's not overnight. It's not like you just walk in with your dress and be like, fuck you, here I am. When you don't feel like you belong, that, uncomfortable, that uncomfort, discomfort steps in. So it's about assessing your environment and saying like, what can I wear that's flowy, that makes me feel authentic to myself, feminine, powerful in my femininity, but also not so uncomfortable that I'm second guessing every fucking thing that I do that day. Maybe it is layering something a little crisper over top, like a blazer, but a cute one with a little cute brooch on it and wearing a great purse. So it's finding that balance so you can feel professional, 
so people can see you in a way so you can get a freaking word in. You know what I'm saying? Like, it sucks, and I wish that I could say that everything is just like rainbows and like unicorn glitter where you can wear what you want and no one will think otherwise, that your confidence will be enough to carry you through. The confidence comes from feeling good, feeling appropriate, um, allowing yourself the space to shine. If someone's judging you, it's not going to leave that space for you to shine. So it's, it's finding the balance is really what it is. Okay, next question. How do you look polished and professional without looking like you're trying too hard? Ah, the trying too hard. Oh my gosh. Knife in my heart. Knife in my heart. It's one of the biggest style roadblocks that my clients experience. Um, inside of Personal Style University, one of the first things that we do is we go through the style roadblocks, which is all the mental bullshit that is holding you back and keeping you in your comfort zone. And like I always say, ain't shit happen in your comfort zone, okay? All the good stuff happens when you get out of your comfort zone. So when you're telling yourself these stories of, you know, people think I'm trying too hard, um, I can't wear this until I lose weight, uh, I'm not worthy of spending this much money on myself, all of those things keep you small. And we talked about this, I think, in the last live about the whole trying too hard and, again, finding that balance between caring what people think and just not giving a shit, you know? So when you're afraid that people will think you're trying too hard, you are trying to stay in this little box that has been created for you. So if you are dressing well, showing up for yourself, excelling, kicking ass, it's bound to make people uncomfortable because they don't want to see you get ahead or leave the little persona that they have created for you. So I say look like you're trying hard and rock it because the whole trying hard thing, that's in your head. That's all just the little narrative that you told yourself. What everyone else sees is someone showing up looking awesome. And haters are always going to hate. And the people that you want to be around that are going to love you and want you to rise up are going to celebrate you. So I found it very interesting. Like I'm constantly observing. I just love to observe. I don't know. But I was shopping yesterday. I was having my me day. And I just got my hair done. And this woman at Nordstrom came up to me and she was like, I just want to tell you that you look, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. She's like, I love your hair. You're just, you're absolutely stunning. And I was like, thank you. And I didn't, I had no makeup on. The zit was raging. I mean, but I was like, how kind of someone to not be threatened, especially like another woman, because real talk, we know that shit happens. There is a ton of woman on woman hate when someone's prettier, cuter, sexier, smarter, whatever. We don't think that there's room for all of us at the top when there's plenty of freaking room. But, you know, we've been raised in that mentality of like there's only room, room for one. And it's not surprising either. Like as a minority, it's like, well, there's only room for one black person here. It's either me <laughs> or me. Like, we're, you know, we're going to fight to this. There's only room for one woman here. It's not true. So when you are around people who will celebrate you and be like, great outfit. You look so pretty. It's awesome. It's awesome. And there's always going to be the other woman who doesn't say shit and looks at me like, oh, that bitch thinks she's so fucking fly with her hair. Ignore her and embrace the ones that are wonderful. Whenever I see someone who is just like crushing it with their style, I, I, I tell them, I tell them, I tell them they look good. Look at you rocking that dress. It's awesome. I saw a woman at the Grove. Uh, it was weird. I was shopping at Nordstrom Rack and I saw this dress. I was like, that dress is so cute. I was like, I, don't, I couldn't, it's like not me. I, I couldn't pull it off properly. And then I saw a woman like an hour later wearing it. And I was just like, girl, look at you rocking that dress, just walking around, 
shopping. You could have on sweatpants, but you are rocking like a full on maxi dress, pleats, florals, owning it. Go up and like and celebrate that person because in her mind, she could be thinking that she's trying too hard. Who, who am I to be wearing a dress just to shop around at the Grove with the rest of the scrubs who are wearing jeans? You know, let, let her have that moment and let you have that moment. Dress well, do your thing, you know? And damn, you know, be gone to the haters who think you're trying too hard. You're trying to be the best damn you that you can be and you should never have to apologize for that. And a lot of us do, you know, do. We shrink ourselves and make ourselves feel small. Um, but when you get down to the reality of it, this is your life, right? Like you got shit to do. You got things to accomplish. You better go on with your bad self looking good. All right. And the final question, style for the home office. It's such a damn challenge for me, this person says. Listen, I work from home. My coworkers are my dogs. I don't see humans unless I come on and do a live. And even then, I don't see you. I just see your little comments and your little icons. Uh, I don't go anywhere. <laughs> I walk the dogs a couple times a day. I don't have to get dressed if I don't want to. I can be sitting at my computer completely nude if I felt like it. But I know that my performance suffers. It just does. Like literally this week has been like such a good lesson in terms of doing it anyways. Like when you feel like shit, do it anyways. Get in the shower, put on some clothes, put on some damn lipstick, do it anyways. I didn't do it anyways this week because hello, no one's perfect. Uh, but I, I was, freaking bummed. I thought my dog was going to die. I had on sweats. I was like, well, since I'm in sweats, I can easily work from the couch. Oh, this couch is so comfortable. Maybe I'll just kind of lay this way instead of sitting up straight. And my performance suffered tremendously. Barely got anything done. Just lazy, lazy, lazy. And when you work from home, a lot of times, you have to be your own motivator, whether it's because you're your own boss or maybe you work for someone else and they allow you to work from home, but you have to be your own motivator or you're not going to make that money. Your ass is going to get fired. Like who knows? So for me, getting dressed and it can still be comfortable. Like it can still be comfortable. I'm not going to sit here in like a little, you know, tight little dress. So I feel professional. That is just, it's not, it's not comfortable. Um, so I'm usually wearing jeans. I'm usually wearing something that I can like easily move in, but I still want to look good. Like I have on jeans. I got my trusty like Metallica t-shirt on that I just love, but I put on this little sequin topper and a, you know, a little clip in my hair and I just feel so much better. I'm equally as comfortable as putting on something that looks like garbage but I've sh I've, I showed up for myself. So if you know that you're gonna be working from home, um, I talk a lot about in Personal Style University, creating a style uniform based off of your style type, your body type, your preferences, and just like your lifestyle. Finding a uniform that works for you and doing the best version of that. It's just like question number two, how do you dress for a casual work environment? Take casual clothes and do them the best way that you freaking can. Styling for the home office, what is an outfit that you can wear that makes you feel you, that makes you feel powerful, that makes you just feel like you're feeling yourself? That's what you need to be wearing. So instead of amassing all of these clothes that are ridiculous or just defaulting into the same old shit, think about what makes you feel great. Like, I feel really great today. I even got like a little pair of white booties. I don't need to wear booties in the house but I put them on this morning just to be like, hey, that's right, who's ready to work? And it's, our, it's, it's 12.25 here, and I've already got more done today than I have the entire week because I feel good, okay? I feel really good. Um, let's see, 
Someone said, didn't catch the whole live. Hope you put it on YouTube. Um, and just know if you're watching on Facebook, all of the videos stay on Facebook. You just have to go to the video tab and all the past lives are there. If you're watching on Instagram, you have 24 hours to watch it or head over to uh, Facebook. Sometimes I upload them to YouTube if I think they're YouTube worthy. This one's a little bit all over the place, so I don't know if I'll put it on YouTube. I might put it up anyway. Who cares? It's been a long week. I'm just happy to be here. Who cares if I don't make sense? Little heart taps and comments make me feel like I've at least made a little bit of sense. So uh, that is this week's um, that is this week's tea time with Lauren. Tune in next week. I will pick a new topic for next week. Um, I've got a bunch of little topics that I'm tossing around, but if you ever have the idea for a topic, not a question, a topic, drop it in the comments and I will add it to my list. So thanks everyone for tuning in and have a absolute peach of a weekend. See y'all later.